This organization has a four-year publishing history. As far as we are aware, and as far as anyone has ever alleged in any credible manner whatsoever, uh, no single individual has ever come to harm uh, as a result of anything that we have ever published. Of course, abusive, titanic organizations, when, explo when exposed, grasp at all sorts of ridiculous straws to try and distract the public from the true nature of the abuse. In this latest instance, we see the US State Department refusing to provide us with details, uh, which we know they have, uh, of the specific cable numbers, which they claim um, uh, mention people that they would like to see protected. They point blank refuse to do that. Uh, we have guaranteed them confidentiality in those uh, types of discussions. They do not assist. They do not assist uh, the other media uh, in that uh, detailed information. They did not assist our request uh, for the Iraq war log. They did not assist uh, for our material relations to Afghanistan. In fact, they are playing a dangerous game uh, of brinkmanship. And I think this really reveals their true interests and concerns, that although we are a responsible organization and no one has come to harm, let us imagine if we were. Let us imagine if we were, in fact, the caricature that this organization, that the State Department uh, tries to paint us. What then if we, if we simply went ahead uh, without any assistance whatsoever? Um, uh, for, from the U.S. authority. Well, we try and do a meticulous job, but let imagine, let's imagine that we didn't. And the uh, U.S., uh, in its desire to suppress everything uh, by not assisting us uh, in, re in harm minimization efforts whatsoever, uh, ended up uh, uh, not having anything uh, redacted, because that's the line that it's trying to, to take. Uh, it understands that we are a responsible organization. So it's trying to make us as, make it as hard for us as possible, uh, to publish responsibly in the hope that we can get anything at all. Because not publishing anything at all would mean not publishing the abuses, uh, by that organization. Assalamualaikum. Hassan Al-Arab. Yes, indeed. We think it is very important to um, to have the media of the country that is most concerned <coughs> and knowledgeable about a subject uh, have access to the primary source materials. Um, so uh, uh, we do that commonly. Um, for this latest, uh, this forthcoming release, uh, over time we will um, make alliances with uh, Arab media. Some of those um, uh, are already being negotiated. Good morning. Uh, Marwan Malou from Lebanon. My question is, will your leaks only be linked to the war of the U.S. outside of their lands, which is Iraq, Afghanistan, or will it be also you'll be starting to leak information that are related to um, internal uh, issues or uh, you know policy of the U.S. related to aid to uh, the region, or will it be only linked to the war and the the war on ter terror? Thank you. We ha we have released uh, leaked documents from over 100 countries in the past four years, uh, from um, assassinations uh, in East Timor uh, to the behaviour of some of the biggest uh, United States private banks. Um, so we cover. 
uh, everything. If you're asking about what's coming up uh, soon, um, uh, the material that, that we are about to release uh, covers uh, essentially every uh, major issue in every country in the world, uh, including uh, extraordinary reporting uh, across uh, all Arab states. صباح الخير جميل ياسر من العراق إلى أي مدى يمكن أن تساعد عملية نشر الوثائق والملفات عن الانتهاكات ضد المدنيين العراقيين في الحد من مثل تلك الانتهاكات مستقبلا في أي بقعة من العالم؟ It's hard yet to know, um, but, if, but if there is such a thing as a meaningful deterrent, uh, then knowing about it is the first step on that path. Whether that deterrent in the end becomes meaningful uh, is up to what people now do with the information. Uh, but we can see some movements uh, in the United Nations uh, which has uh, opened an investigation uh, and in these uh, countries that I spoke about before uh, amongst the Iraqi people themselves uh, where there is a project uh, to translate a part of this release, uh, a last release, sorry, uh, into Arabic. And uh, we have seen uh, material um, used uh, from the Iraq war logs uh, in uh, Iraqi local politics uh, and national politics. And so I, I can see that uh, it is uh, having an influence and um, that sets a negative example uh, which provides a deterrent uh, to some uh, some organizations from behaving uh, in a similar way in the future. Um, I think that the deterrent effect uh, for the United States, because it is so clear, um, uh, is likely to be, to be real. Uh, but, of course, um, I would not say that the United States is not going uh, to commit uh, war crimes in the future. Uh, the way in which political accountability uh, for the military in the United States uh, is progressing, I think, is is very uh, concerning indeed. Uh, there appears to be um, a, con a slow uh, consolidation of power over the past uh, 10 years between uh, different parts of, of the U.S. military uh, and intelligence apparatus uh, and the political uh, and financial elite, uh, as all these systems uh, become more uh, interconnected uh, with each other, trade more information with each other, uh, have greater uh, share uh, cross holdings, um, and interact more uh, with a, a fairly uh, captured media uh, in the United States. So I think the, the, the general trend uh, for accountability uh, of the U.S. military is worrying, um, but fortunately there are still good people um, in the U.S. government, and some of those good people uh, want to see things go the other way, and they're willing to step forward uh, to give us material uh, to help us do that uh, and to give some other journalists a similar material as well. Um, let us not forget that under Bush uh, in 2006, 2007, that there was a, a serious attempt uh, to get up uh, a war uh, with Iran, uh, and that didn't eventuate. And one of the reasons it didn't eventuate uh, is, a, is a series of not tight, not massive leaks uh, like we have, but nonetheless a, a series of important um, leaks made out through people like Cy Hirsch uh, at the New, New Yorker, uh, which uh, turned around some of the, the uh, uh, feeling that planning for uh, such a war within uh, the Pentagon uh, was a completely acceptable path. It became clear that, in fact, uh, it was a politically fraught path. Uh, and that's, that knowledge then, I presume, influenced uh, those generals and senior bureaucrats and functionaries uh, who started to suspect that if a, a democratic administration came in afterwards, uh, they would no longer have a career if they had gone down that path. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Assange, we'll take one more, one last question. Uh, can, can you speak up a bit, please? With your permission, 
we will take Perhaps one to speak last closer question. to the mic or, or louder. Sorry? I, I can see you just fine, but I can't hear you. Uh, perhaps you could do some sign language. Sideways, here, like this. Oh, one last question. Can you take one last question? No, I'm sorry, I, I still can't hear you. You can't hear. I'm sorry, we'll, we'll have to end it there. He cannot hear us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Assange, for making yourself available on behalf of a REACH organization. We're grateful for your time. You've been with us for the past hour. You've shed light on many important issues facing you. Uh, you're Good. getting a lot of reception and coverage here in Jordan, at least. So, thank you again for being with thank us. You. We enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, members of the audience. Thank you. Thanks.